and welcome to WRPB and WRPU Studios. Okay, so if you haven't heard it like thousands and thousands of times, I'm telling you again. Always, always, always use a professional. Because when you don't, you'll end up having to use a professional. It'll cost you five times more and ten times more stress. With me is Adam Jones from Tech Up Partners. Hey, Adam, how are you? Doing well, doing well. So this world is really strange because we were at a networking thing, and I was there and you were there, but we didn't meet there. The guy who runs it, um, actually, I connected me with you because you needed something done from one of my other companies, and you needed it done in a short little time span. And we were able to get it done for you. But I said, you know what? you got to come into the studio because today everything is technology. Everything is. And, and thank you for having me in the studio. Oh, uh, <laughs> my pleasure. Okay, so how long are you, you, you in this technology space? Oh, I've been in the technology space in, in one order or another since I was 15 years old. Okay, so I could be nice, but you're not a woman, so I don't have to be that nice. I would have normally said since you, so, so about uh, five years, since you were five. But okay, <laughs> okay, so um, you've been so in a while. Well, yeah, uh, all in all, it's been uh, it's been about a 20 year endeavor from from start to where we're at now. Uh, professionally, I started doing it out of high school as. Why? Why this industry? Just a passion. Uh, I ultimately started doing it when I was about 10 years old with the, the home computer, uh, which infuriated my mother, of course. But at that point, you know, it was just taking it apart, putting it back together, figuring out how it worked. Uh, at some point in my young life, there was just a drive there to figure out technology and how it all worked. <coughs> and I get that because my dad, I used to take apart everything and put it together. And my dad would say, what are you doing, looking for where the feet grow? That was his term. And I, like, I took, okay. I come back, I'm 65 years old, so we had telephones, and when push-button phones came in, not rotary, I would, they had these, like, Parsons tables, they're little like end tables, and they're plastic. So I took a phone apart, and I built it within this plastic Parsons table with my soldering iron to melt the holes that I needed and stuff. So I get it, and even when I was even younger than that, I would go, my grandmother, she worked in the city, and I would get a paper towel roll and some paper clips and some tape. And she, she brought two, like some batteries and a little bulb, and I would make these little <laughs> flashlights. So I, I get it. It's just something within you that has to find out where the feet grow and how to make it better. So you get into this industry, and the tech industry is probably the fastest moving industry that there is, in my opinion. It's been fun to watch. No, it's been fun to be a part of, and it's been growing exponentially, you know, since the late 80s, early 90s, and it's been wonderful, the amount of opportunities that have come from it, uh, the ability to see different places in, in different parts of the country, uh, just being able to go through and work. So who's your clientele? Right now, my clientele is mainly, uh, we have a couple charter schools, a couple nonprofits, uh, and mid, small to mid-sized businesses that just need to get their arms around their technology. They are having a you know, difficult time in finding their technology or keeping their technology or keeping their technology secure, all the above. We assist with taking your mind off of it uh, to making it something that you don't have to concern yourself with. And by doing so, it typically, you know, from a cost-benefit analysis, it typically frees the higher-ups in the company to, when they're not chasing their tail for technical reasons, to go on and do their actual job. And it, it's like, it could become a nightmare because, <coughs> I'll give you a quick example. Um, my wife's a chocolatier, and we were doing these brochures for an event, and somehow her... All right, so I'm going to say it's stupid because I don't know the answers. So somehow she couldn't uh, connect to the Wi-Fi, okay, to the router. But I couldn't even find the Wi-Fi adapter within her computer. And it's, it was there because it was constantly being used. And it was a nightmare. Everything I tried, I couldn't find it. So we probably wasted about three hours. Think about how much value that three hours is for a business person. Uh, and real quick, uh, the added value to saving that three hours of your life that you'll never get back and to the amount of stress that it caused you trying to figure it out yourself. Uh, um, it, it's for, for me, that's really where the industry 
lives is being able to let people do what people are supposed to be doing and want to be doing and let us handle what we're supposed to be doing and what we want to be doing. Okay, so I have, an, I have uh, other companies <coughs> that I'm involved with, and one of them had some issues with a firewall, and I, you just got that up and running for them, right? So I'm ignorant, so what is a firewall? I mean, I we have... Um, all these programs, like, I don't have Norton, but there's a Norton, a Vast, there's a bunch of them. But what's a firewall? A firewall is a hardware device that you put in between the, uh, the internet connection and the rest of your devices in the organization. And its purpose is to do things like IDS and IPS, which is intrusive detection and prevention and the reason that you you want it doing those things is because if somebody is in fact attempting to access your network uh, you would never know it without such an appliance Interesting. you would never have any idea and if they were there and they were already inside of your network uh, then there would be nothing that would prevent them from continuing to do so and and monitoring your traffic and and potentially keystrokes and personal information for employees and things of that nature. Well, how many people, <clears throat> how many of you guys out there do your banking online? Exactly. Okay. Uh, what's the value there? So is, without going over prices, is a firewall expensive? Is it a sliding scale thing where uh, Mary and her husband get a firewall and, it's, you know, they need a simple firewall or is a firewall a firewall? Uh, no, there's definitely different levels of them and there's different you know, obviously there's different prices for the different levels, depending on where you, you know, enterprise level firewalls are extremely expensive and they're giant devices and uh, they, they run extremely loud and they make a bunch of heat. And, Do they? You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, okay. and they end up, um, you know, they end up doing basically everything you could imagine. Uh, they're, they're at the forefront of threat analysis and um, prevention and detection. Uh, now, for your typical... Your, your typical small business, they make ones that are pretty low in price, between two and four hundred dollars, and you can simply, you know, plug in between your internet, and it takes about five minutes to set up, and it'll give you all your stats and who's connected to your network and what data is flowing through your network and what percentages and what's taking up the majority of your bandwidth, and it'll flag you and alert you if anybody tries to do anything malicious. Can you like okay so? If you have an organization with 10 people and one of the people that work is on their computer and going to see porn sites, can you, is, does the firewall block that? It does. Can I, can I say, hey, I want to block this one but not this one from going to certain sites? You can. Can, you, can you do all that kind of stuff? You absolutely can. So if you have a salesperson, you surely don't want them going on to Amazon Prime. Right. Right? Can, right. So can you stop... All the computers except for the people who do the shopping from going to? Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's yeah, you, what, see, now, I have zero clue of that. And I know that I bang away at the computer, and I don't know the some sites I go to. And <clears throat> the ironic part about it is that every so often, more than I care to talk about, stuff comes up on my computer that didn't make any sense for me. Now, I might have said, I might, I might have been in my office saying, you know what? I think I can make hard-boiled eggs, okay, with a blue pot. And all of a sudden, I'll get a bunch of ads about blue pot. Everything's an ad generator now. Are they just listening? Well, they're just waiting. Every visit somebody makes to that particular site, any ad that's on that site, you know, they check that box, and you're another number in the pot. Yeah. And that, that's more ad revenue. Oh, right? my God. So, uh, those numbers just continue to, to go upward the more site visits that people get, so they do anything they can to attract you to those kinds of sites. Okay, so do you do, so um, Mary's opening a bagel store, she's going to have five computers, do you do like the setup and the whole nine yards with them? Absolutely, if uh, need be. Uh, typically what we have done in the past is uh, everything from cable installation to PC installation to uh, PCs that are already installed. Uh, you know, to the to the next level there, which is companies that have five to fifteen PCs that you know we go in and we just install our agents on them, 
and we then give you your antivirus and we give you the ability to remote into any of your computers, the ability to have them automatically updated uh, to be able to circumvent updates that are potentially harmful, um, and it, it gives you just overall management of your devices and visibility into everything that's being done and, and that's going on. Uh, there's, you know, a little bit further up the scale, we've gone into a few companies that have internal IT departments already, and in that, we assist the internal IT department with how they generate tickets and requests from their user base. Uh, we have an application online that you can set up, and it will take in all your service requests. Uh, we've used it for supply chain. Um, we've used so it I, across industries. Okay, so hold on. So you're taking me from here <coughs> to like here in, uh, and again, I, it's not my wheelhouse, but it seems like you have programs that do, that you set up programs that do inventory control, that kind of stuff? Absolutely. So on the other side where, you know, we're not managing hardwares and firewalls, cables, computers, things of that nature, uh, we tend to manage data. And, and we do data migration as well. So what that means in turn is to be able to take data that you have going through three or four or five or six different systems online, whether it be Salesforce or, or be, you know, any online accessible management system uh, that, that have tons and tons of components uh, that are typically hard to filter through for smaller companies that purchase them. Uh, we take it, we shrink it down, we, we kind of minimize your processes there so that you see it all in one single pane of glass and we customize it to what you actually need to see and how you need to see it. And then... I mean, there are a million programs out there, but they seem to be, for lack of a better word, very general and having right. things that you don't need. So now you got to... You got this the screen, but you have to pull all the way over because it gives you 18 things that you don't need. Right. Okay, so you kind of, so do you work with those programs and then, uh, for lack of a better, shrink them down, or do you design your own around what they need? So we've actually designed our own uh, multiple times, and, and we've used the same platform over and over again kind of as a template, but we can customize it to do a variety of needs. Uh, and to answer your question directly, we do that by taking your 20 features like you just mentioned your 18 to 20 things that you don't need mm -hmm. and basically removing them out of your way and, and customizing our application to show you exactly what you need to see and how you need to see it uh, with that there's also the cost because most of the bigger companies that want those 18 things in your way want to sell you that as a feature set, <laughs> right. right? They want you to pay for, you need two features, but they need you to pay for 20 to 25 features because it's as part of this feature pack. And it looks better for them. Hey, you're spending uh, $20 a month, but look at all the things you're getting. Well, I don't need all those things. It doesn't matter. It just, it so, looks a bit. You but know. that's how they sell it, and they won't sell it any other way. They, they won't just sell you piece by piece. That's On our right. end, we're not charging you month by month for a package of features. Uh, we're, we're charging you for the development of the customization. So once that development and that customization is done... I'm done with you. You're, you're done. Well, you're done with paying us. If you need additional you. customization, well, don't delete us, please. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be deleted. We um, want to be here to stay. Yeah, it's really interesting because... We spoke everything we spoke about. By the time this airs, there'll be eight hundred fifty-two thousand other things that are about and on the on, in the tech field in the tech world. It changes so rapidly. Yeah. How do you keep up with all that stuff that's going on? Education. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's really just being tapped in to the market and what's going okay. on inside of the tech world. Uh, you just got to keep your ear to the ground, and we do it by keeping our ear to the ground. We stay up to date with our vendors, we stay up to date with our clients, uh, and we attend as many of the group events that we can, uh, along with, the, for instance, the IT Expo, which happened you know, just about a month ago down in Fort Lauderdale. There's one coming up at the beginning of September in Orlando that we'll also be attending. And, and it's really just to see what the latest and greatest ideas are that are out there, uh, you can generally tell by the room 
you know, how many people you have in cell phones, how many people you have in, you know, voice over IP phones, how many people you have in cellular data, and, and how many booths there are for each one to see where the market is kind of shifting and where, where it wants to be. Uh, and, and that's really just how you keep up with it. And, and as, you, as you see the technology, you can't, it's impossible to know it all, right? It's impossible to do it all. Right. So you have to depend on the technology sector as as a whole to educate you constantly on what's coming up and what's coming out and, and how people are transitioning to newer technology. Well, I, I have Edgar and Angel, and they're like tech wizards, besides being the, probably the best editors anywhere on the Treasure Coast. And I'm old, so it's much harder when you get older. All that stuff that used to be so simple for me is much harder. So You're not that old. Man. People, I'm 65. <laughs> People like you really kind of make our jobs flow smoother. That's with, our hope. With less aggravation because, let's face it, it gets very frustrating when something on your computer goes wrong. Really frustrating. What's the top of the time? How do people find you? you have a website? Yep. Techopspartners.com is where you'll find us. Phone number? Uh, the phone number is on the website. And you can also find us on Google Maps, Google um, we are working on our social media platforms right now. They're being redeveloped. Uh, the website is going to go under redevelopment here at the beginning of 2023. Um, are you for you? You kind of forced to stay at the top of technology because you're a technology company. Absolutely. So, so you know, if, if if I sold shoes and I was walking around with holes in my shoes, <laughs> I don't think people would buy shoes from me. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I want to thank you for taking care of Dirk. Absolutely. Um, everybody. It's a pleasure. Use a professional. Darn it. How many times I got to tell you? <laughs> use a professional. We'll be right back.